hope you're enjoying the chiptune music. Hello, hello. <laughs> I'm going to get started pretty much now. Um, I've never streamed to YouTube, so let me see if I can figure out how this works. Uh, <laughs> all right. I'm gonna pause the music for a sec here, and I don't think I'm gonna keep up with the music anyway, so I think that's the end of chiptunes for today. Rest in peace, chiptunes. Okay. Uh, but yeah, hello, hello. I will take a look at chat in a moment. I don't know if anybody's talking or not yet. Again, new to YouTube. I don't know what's going on. Hi, Miguel. Hi, John. Welcome in, welcome in. Okay, let's switch over to chatting. Hello, you can totally see my microphone. What can I say? I'm a professional. I think I, uh, it's at a different angle, so I actually don't think I can like hide my mic today from the stream, but I'll do my best. Um, but yeah, hello, good morning, afternoon, evening to everyone who is tuning in right now. I'm excited for this to be a Nice little VOD at the end. We will have, obviously this is like going to be posted as a video on our channel. So that's pretty cool. Um, but this is like a new segment that I'm hoping to do on a monthly basis. It's kind of like a recap of the month. And in the future, since this is the first one, I didn't want to invite any guests on because I was worried that it would be a little bit scuffed and I wanted to kind of like iron out any kinks before inviting somebody on, right? Um, but I think that this would be like a really, really fun way that people can have their projects uh, featured and have a chance to kind of like talk about what their experience was. I will be posting the Container Canary um, collaboration stream that we did recently with NVIDIA for Container Canary, which was built with Bubble Tea, all that good stuff. Um, the interview, I think, will look kind of similar to that. There probably won't be any pair programming going on, but we will be asking about, you know, You'll be able to kind of uh, talk about your experience building the project and it'll be a great way to give us feedback and pitch your project to anyone who's interested. So yeah, so in August of 2022, there's quite a bit that happened this month. I'm very excited to share it. So not only at Charm, but just with, there were some incredible community projects that I'm very excited to feature. And as I mentioned, next time we'll have some of the authors on and actually be able to chat with them, but I only had so many things I could coordinate this time. Um, but let's switch over to our little news section over here. So a couple of big changes this month is that we released a brand new soft serve. So if you didn't know already, we also published a video uh, this week kind of outlining the features that changed. But as you can see, the, we completely overhauled the UI. There is mouse support. You can now copy the git clone commands and stuff like that over SSH. So overall, it's just, I have to give so much props to Christian and Eamon and everyone on the team who put a lot of effort into getting this launched because I think it looks incredible and I've been using it myself and I love, love, love the new UI. So that's super exciting. And then of course we had gum launch, which was completely insane. So much good feedback on that. And I'll go ahead and show you a quick example just now. I don't know if there's any audio with this one. I actually don't know if it's including audio or not, <laughs> which is really fun. Um, but basically what this is showing you, uh, this is a drafted uh, reel that we are posting on Instagram in the future, so you guys are getting a little bit of a sneak peek. Um, but basically, we had someone in the community that did an excellent job in creating a script with gum, where basically they made it so that it will, they can choose what packages they wanna update and it will go ahead and run all those updates for them. And of course, all of that, that kind of user feedback and that interactivity was built in with gum. So Gum had a crazy, crazy launch. We've seen so many cool things that people have built with Gum. And yeah, we're really excited to continue seeing what people build. And it's overall just been great. Big, big shout out to Moss for his hard work on that. Absolutely killed it. And then let's get into some featured projects. So 
We've got um, one big one is Bubble Zone. So Bubble Zone is a super cool project that we are all, the entire team was super excited about. And that is um, a wonderful member of the community, LR Stanley on GitHub, provided us with um, a project that pr gives us mouse support for Bubble T. So I'll go ahead and show you what that looks like a little bit. So this is actually based on our lip gloss example. And as you can see, he's actually like completely just interacting with it with his mouse and he's able to do all of these incredible, very cool things. <laughs> but to go over some of the features that this kind of the overview from the GitHub is that it's fast. So given that it has to process this information for every render, they tried to focus on performance wherever possible. And if you can see where improvements can be made, you can of course reach out to them on GitHub. And it doesn't impact width calculations when using lipgloss.width. Lip if you're using the length, it will. It's simple, uh, it's easily, you can easily determine the offset or if an event was within the bounds of a zone. Uh, you can, oh. Oh, sorry, I was like reading and I was like, I don't know what this is trying to make me say. Okay, want the mouse event position relative to the component. It's very easy to do. And it provides you with an optional global manager when you have full access to all components. So you don't have to inject it as a dependency to all components. So we're very excited about this and we love, love, love the way he's implemented it. So big shout out for Bubble Zone. Excellent work there. And then let's go ahead and talk about, so UGM, this is by Aria SMN on GitHub. And I'll show you a little bit about what that is. Uh, this is the example right here. Um, but basically it allows you to manage user group, uh, manage Unix groups and users. You can view information about all of the different Unix users and groups in kind of nice little UI here. So that one is also very fun to add to your toolkit. And we really liked um, how they laid that out and the work that they did on that. So very, very good job on that one as well. And let's go ahead to talking about Blip Gloss. So this is basically um, being able to leverage the power of Lip Gloss for your Bun projects. So any of you uh, web developers that are using Bun or TypeScript, JavaScript, developers that are using Bun, uh, you can go ahead and get started with that. So let me show you a little example of like what that looks like. This is just a still image, um, but basically they have an example. I'll show you the code here so that you can see how easy it was for them to do this and how similar it looks to the implementation in Go. So here you can go ahead and create a new style with lip gloss and go ahead and set bold, set the foreground color, set the background color, set the paddings. You can also make that just dot padding. Um, yeah, two comma four, depending on um, that. But anyway, you can set the pad, set the width the same way that you normally would with your Go project, but you can actually incorporate it over to um, Bun now as well, which is very, very fun. So we thought this was a pretty cool project to feature. And yeah, thank you so much for making our project more accessible to a wider audience. We super, super appreciate that. Hello, Try. Hello, hello. And let's also quickly talk about some, another project that has been released. I'll show you a little demo video that, again, you're getting a sneak preview of, this one's more of a mock-up of what our Instagram post is going to look like. Um, but you can follow us on Instagram if you're interested in seeing some of these project demos, getting like, a, kind of like an under one minute explanation of some of our different projects and stuff like that. We feature some of the same content um, on our YouTube as well, but I try and keep the shorts to a minimum. I don't want them to just like clutter the uploads. So you'll definitely see more of that short form content on our Instagram. Let me post that in the chat so that you can follow if you are interested. I think that's the link. <laughs> I think that's, oh wait, wait. I think it's charm underscore CLI. That's my bad. <laughs> um, and for those of you who are watching the recording of this, I will post it in the description <laughs> so that 
you'll have links to all of the examples and all of our socials if you want to keep in touch. But the incredible team at Amazon built another tool with Bubble Tea, which we are super excited about. So I'll go ahead and show you what they built. Today we're introducing Amazon's EC2 instance selector that's built with Bubble oh. Tea. So this is a command line tool in Go library Sorry, that recommends that like instance types loud. based on resource criteria like vCPUs and memory. On my end, so that Check it out on fun. their GitHub. Rip your ears. <laughs> Very sorry. Okay, um, let's watch it again. I will turn down Today the volume. Today we're introducing past Amazon's very loud EC2 instance selector what this is doing that's for built you. with Bubble Tea. Actually, so I this guess is. If it's, I'll, I'll just mute it because I'm I'm talking to you. That's chaos. Uh, <laughs> basically, what this is doing is that you are able to choose. It will basically give you um, recommendations for which instances you might want to work with based on different um, restrictions or. Um, fields kind of like like uh, vCPU, memory, um, GPU, all of that different stuff. So you can sort what the instance filters that you might that might be of interest to you for AWS. So that's something that they built in August as well, and or came to our attention at least in August. I got to double check when they actually built it, but that one is super cool. And of course, we are always excited to see. Um, what gets built by the community and how businesses are using our tools and all of that good stuff. Um, but yeah, so that is pretty much it for today. I just wanted to keep this a little bit short and sweet. Of course, the next one, when we start to have guests on, it will drag out a little bit longer because we will be interviewing the different authors. But I wanted to, for the first one, just iron out the details and get these demos up and see how smooth we can make it look. Um, have you guys checked Textual? That is for Python, right? If I'm not mistaken, that's like the, or is that Textualize? I'm trying to remember. Uh, yeah, Chewy framework for Python. We have actually recommended that to people in the community that have asked about any kind of similar frameworks for Python. Yeah. So it's definitely our, um, I think it was Moss that mentioned it. I've heard of it before, I haven't tried it, but Moss, Moss definitely recommended it if you like, um, if you're a Python user. Yeah, Python rich, rich and textual, yeah, yeah. So definitely if you are a Python user, check it out. Check it out if you wanna build some GUIs. Uh, and then also with our, with GUM, with the release of GUM, it also means that you can start incorporating um, different UI components that are built into bubbles. You can actually incorporate that into a bunch of different languages and stuff as well, because obviously um, gum is like written in bash. So you can basically just execute it. We have examples on basically using gum with Python and Ruby, but of course, like the thing is with gum is that it's very, um, I feel like it, you know, it's not as customizable as like a full, full fledged, like bubble tea application right or like the you won't get the same granular words granularity as what you might be able to um achieve if you're using textual or something like that just if you're looking to build that like a full-fledged tui so yeah we we like textual <laughs> um yeah do you guys have any questions for us if not i'll go ahead and end our first live stream and yeah this was fun i was very nervous for it, but I'm glad that it seemed to work out not super scuffed, which is good. <laughs> Except for me probably deafening you with the videos, but I'll do that for next time. <laughs> All right, great. And don't forget to, if you enjoyed this video, if you enjoyed hearing what we have to say, we will be doing this on a monthly basis. I hope you guys have an incredible rest of your day. If you like our content that we're providing on YouTube, please give us a like and a subscribe because it helps helps YouTube know that people like our stuff and will push our content further. And we appreciate any and all, um, yeah, contributions. We're loving seeing all the projects you guys are building. We're loving all the feedback. The Charm Slack has been so, so busy. We're trying to make sure that we can respond to everyone and all of that stuff. So. Yeah, go ahead and join the Slack as well, which is just at charm.sh slash Slack. That's how you can get the invite. 
and you're all invited. You can you can all sit with us, okay? You're all invited to sit with us. But yeah, thank you so much, everyone. I hope you have a good rest of your day. Bye. <laughs>